Lads, welcome back to Fusion YGO. It's your boy Christian the Haver Card Man back at you with another deck profile today. And uh, well, we're actually back with a disaster piece. I couldn't let Patrick have all the fun, so I figured it was my turn to step in and take over this chapter of the disaster piece series. For today's installment, we are doing none other than Scrap Conco. If you guys have watched my Master Duel streams at all, you know that I've already been tinkering around with this deck for a little while, and I think I've finally come down to a version that I think is going to be good to take to locals and have a good time with. Uh, by no means is this going to be meta relevant or competitive. It's just a fun deck that I'm tinkering around with because I am kind of on a tighter budget at the moment, and this deck just seemed interesting it's two archetypes that should not have any business going together but somehow for some godforsaken reason they do i did kind of give myself a bit of a challenge for this deck i wanted to build it without hand traps at all i almost included bis deals in the side deck and i ended up leaning against it and i think honestly it's probably for the better this deck is going to be very interesting it's very versatile good at going second it's able to go first pretty well and uh i think there's just a lot of things this deck can do so we'll start with the deck profile today and then in a couple days we'll have a couple of live duels come out for this and then if there's enough love for this deck down in the comments and the like section uh i will do a combat tutorial for this as well so you guys can get a better understanding of this deck because it's one that i really enjoy so far so without further ado we will just go ahead and jump into the deck profile today and i'll kind of explain some stuff as i go so starting off we're going to kick it off with a scrap engine here we are running triple of the best boy scrap raptor uh he's the best card in the deck the main line of your combos most of the combos that you're trying to go for are two to three card combos but there is things you can do going second with just a scrap raptor should it go uninterrupted for whatever reason <laughs> uh next up we got three copies of fossil egg and three copies of scrapyard to get our best boy out putting him at nine copies total we do have other methods as well to pull him out of the deck and be able to utilize him uh we'll get more into that here soon so for the rest of the scrap engine we are running double scrap chimera best extender to be able to search off of scrap raptor uh fantastic card it's good to have two of these to have follow-up or if you end up opening one it's actually really good because then you can search another card with well a couple other cards with scrap raptor that are actually really good as well next up we're running two copies of scrap golem got to make sure that there's at least one fridge in the deck if you open one sometimes that's not always that bad there are plays that i've had where i've opened this and other stuff and i was able to actually make it work so uh yeah that's pretty cool next up to kind of help us play around hand traps a little bit and also strengthen our deck get ex it gives us extra combo potential gives us extra cards to draw that is three copies of scrap storm if you guys don't know what this does you target a scrap monster you control send one scrap monster from your deck to the graveyard then draw a card then destroy that monster Monster. so if you normal summon a scrap raptor and you activate its effect and your opponent chains imperm you can change scrap or chain scrap storm you still get all the effects that you want off of your scrap raptor and completely dodge the imperm while also sending a scrap monster to the graveyard and drawing an additional card on the way to replace itself not a hard once per turn effect which is really funny and i absolutely love that next up here we're also playing three scrap factory this is another card that you want to see basically you want to have this and scrap raptor and that's kind of your biggest thing it just allows you to do a lot of crazy shenanigans uh we do also have one copy of terraforming to essentially max out on our scrap factory because we really really want to see that card it does so much for this deck uh for the one of monsters we have one scrap orthros one scrap breaker and one scrap searcher orthros is a secondary target to search off of scrapyard if you already have your scrap raptor it allows you to be able to play through things and can do a lot of fun plays for the deck uh scrap breaker usually only good going second because your opponent does need to control a monster to special summon it uh you can send it to the grave with a uh, scrap storm if you wish but usually it's good for going second or if you get a monster in your opponent's field which in this deck is not too hard to do then you can summon him out and get his effect basically he's a non-tuner version of orthro so you can search this off of your scrap raptor instead if you already have the other two aforementioned targets uh and then scrap searcher this is your main target to send off of scrap storm you want to get this guy in the graveyard to be able to revive him and get a ton of recurring value um helps with link climbing helps with synchro climbing scrap searcher just a fantastic card he is probably one of the first cards to get cut in side decking though along with scrap breaker unfortunately so that is it for the scrap engine let's head over to the makonkos real quick so of course the headliner for the makonko engine we are playing triple ohime the manifest in makonko you're just searching for any makonko card you have a lot of duplicates in your scrap engine so a lot of free stuff that you can send to the graveyard off of ohime's resolution uh the biggest thing really is just that it's able to fetch out makonko cards like there are some cases you're even fine with just pitching this if 
if you have the right setup and it doesn't really matter but it is nice sometimes to be able to summon that level six body to the field just having the free either link or synchro material ohime is still a good card in that regard and of course because we love ohime we want extra copies of her so we're playing three preparation of rights to be able to search her from our deck as well so putting us up to six copies of ohime and the main target that we're going to be searching off for is two copies of the great makanko ceremony this sets up our combos the most the special summoning from hand is pretty cool it's a nice extender bonus uh what we really care about though is that graveyard effect to be able to banish it and send a makanko card from our deck to the graveyard that sets up a lot of stuff for our karma lines and it's just overall a really fantastic card so basically we have eight copies of this which is really nice we see it pretty pretty consistently um for the one of Makanko monsters, we have one Hare, the Sword Makanko, one Huli, the Jewel Makanko, and one Nini, the Mirror Makanko. Nini comes up the least and is the most likely to come out in side decking. Uh, she's just there. She's extra name to have uh in case for some reason you open up both of these it's just it's a bonus to have it uh also helps with follow-up turns but your biggest two common pieces are your ha ray and your huli you're going through ha ray first getting your extra equip spell getting into huli later in the turn to get your trap card and just using these guys to facilitate some mean combos spoiler alert there is a floodgate in the extra deck for those of you that know makanko you probably already know what that is for the equip spells we have one makanko water arabesque one makanko dance maya washidori one makanko fire dance and and one Makanko Reflection Rondo. Uh, Reflection Rondo is another one of those that you don't really need. It's definitely one you can side out. These three are the main ones that you need for your combo, but Reflection Rondo is good to have as an extra option, especially if you have any of these in your hand already and you get a free search of an equip spell, you might as well grab the Reflection Rondo. But this is mostly here for the trap card Makanko Rivalry. If we don't quite get through our full combo the way that we plan, we just end on a Makanko board, set this, and then have Rondo as a disruption during our opponent's turn. So that way we can steal their monster while they're trying to play. We have monsters that are hard for them to deal with. And then this gives us follow-up if an equip spell is sent to the graveyard while it's there. We can banish this, add it back to our hand, which is really strong. Next up, we have kind of a little mini two-card engine, which does come up a lot. It's actually very helpful. We have one Infernoble Arms Durandal and one Infernoble Knight Renaud. It's just easy. You, you you get Durandal equipped from the deck, you send it to the grave, add Renaud, and Renaud is a free special summon if you have a Hare on field. If you don't have access to a Hare and you do need it, you can just send the Durandal to add Hare instead of the Renaud. But having this little combo is really nice because once you send the Durandal, you get Renaud, you can special Renaud and then add this back for free advantage. Or you can add back one of your Makanko equip spells if they're already in the grave. It doesn't happen too often in that case, but just having the extra card advantage is well worth it. And then lastly here for the deck, the only real non engine that we play is three copies of Kashtira Fenrir because it's an extender that we can get onto the field immediately, get another copy of itself to have a discard for Ohime, and uh, he's just a really good card. There's a lot of cases where Fenrir comes up, even if that's only being Link material, that is completely fine. So that's it for the main deck, rounding it off at 44 cards. I did have it down to 40 and then I had to make the addition of the Scrapstorm package because it just felt too good to not run it. Uh, if you guys want to cut that and go down to 40, you definitely could. You just cut out the three scrap storm and the one scrap searcher and you're back down to 40 cards but i just felt the package was well worth running and there wasn't really anything else i could cut other than the hand traps that i got rid of about a week ago now for the extra deck we'll go ahead and start off with the link monsters here we are playing with our headliner double copies of scrap wyvern good for turn one and good for follow-up scrap wyvern best card in the extra deck it sets up everything that you need to be able to do uh basically 100 percent of the time he's just a fantastic card we're also playing one geonator transverser once again if you know you know uh we have one nightmare unicorn help break boards also a link three that we can climb up into access code talker with help break boards and otk there's even funny lines if you set up a geonator transverser uh you do an access code underneath it you make it like 4300 attack or whatever give it to your opponent and then attack into the access code talker with your makankos and it's just gg it's really easy access code talker just great card and our last link monster is one underworld goddess of the closed world just to be able to deal with any towers monsters that we might have trouble getting through otherwise uh usually it's not too much of a big deal with the makankos but if for some reason we only see scraps and that's all we're able to play with then uh, we kind of need this as a backup option it's just good to have it there i think uh so this is like the smallest link package i think i've ever really played in a scrap deck being only six monsters but it works it does its job and we're actually focusing a little bit more on the synchros this time which we'll go ahead and hop into right now we are playing one herald of the arc light 
there are situations where it comes up that we have a renaud and a makonko that just aren't doing anything and if the renaud is special summoned by its own effect then it becomes a tuner so we just make a herald of the arc light have an extra negate and a little bit of a mini floodgate it's actually really nice uh we're playing one naturia beast so this is for the scrap storm package if you cut that you cut this as well because that's the only way you can really make it is if you get a scrap searcher in the graveyard and use either a scrap raptor or a scrap orthros but being able to turn off spell cards especially if our floodgate is also in play is uh it's good it's really nice uh we're playing one gold pride star leon this would be a stardust charge warrior if i had one but unfortunately i sold them all my copies a while back thinking i would never need them and uh since locals is just in a few days i'm not going to be able to get a copy in time if i happen to find one the day of that will go in place of this this is just the best level six non-tuner synchro i can find because there are cases where you get like a renaud a golem and a scrap raptor on field and you can't really do much with two tuners so you got to be able to synchro off that renaud and then use this level six with the raptor to go into a synchro 10. that's the biggest reason it's there but it can also be a pop uh, if you're going second and your life points are already lower than your opponent doesn't come up all the time but when it does i mean it's nice it's just a little bonus i would rather have the draw though uh next up we're playing the scrap dragon and the scrap twin dragon in the beautiful ultimate rare that we got i know the camera doesn't really show it that well um but i mean they're just good they're they're scrap monsters and they actually synergize really well with the makankos because basically all the makanko equip spells say this monster cannot be destroyed by card effects so you use one of these guys attempting to destroy one of your own monsters and then either bounce two of your opponents or destroy one of your opponents and it basically just becomes a free effect at that point it's it's wonderful how synergistic those equip spells are with uh with scraps i love it uh next up here we have one power tool braver dragon this is what puts the whole deck together basically your main thing is you're using the scrap engine to go do a power tool braver dragon and then once you summon him you're equipping these three spell cards from the deck uh you're using durandal to most likely search your renaud because you're going to summon a ray off of your water arabesque and then once you so what you get rid of this get your renaud and then once you use your water arabesque to summon your hallway from the deck and equip it this will end up getting unequipped and go to the graveyard as set up for our plays if we have the great makonko ceremony and then now we have hallway to be able to search another equip spell which at that point is likely going to grab our makonko fire dance if we already have this then of course we go for the reflection rondo just to have an extra card in our hand uh, you could also just omit the search if you would rather go for the trap line and that is totally fine as well um so this is the main part of the deck this is what enables the combo from one to the other and it's just fantastic synergy i absolutely love it next up we have one sword soul supreme sovereign Chengying, the big boy chengis uh just a good card uh, once again he synergizes well with the scraps if you try to destroy him you can banish a card from your graveyard instead get removal on your opponent's field and then on resolution you're able to banish a card in your opponent's field and graveyard non-targeting with this guy he gets really big he's hard to deal with and uh he's just a good time and lastly we have one bear on the floor for our synchro package here just an extra level 10 synchro that's really good we get an extra omni negate uh if we can't quite get the normal combo off that we want there are potential ways to be able to end on like a baron a herald and a nat beast so that's just hard for a lot of opponents to play through uh sometimes the baron is a changing instead depending on matchup but basically you're just ending on a board of really strong synchros if you can't make it to the combo that you want and that's honestly usually just fine that's quite a bit to deal with but if you do make it to your normal combo you're gonna need this last guy in the extra deck and that has a number 30 acid golem of destruction like i said for those of you that know you know basically we're using the scrap combo to rush out a bunch of makonkos onto the field um with a couple extra link materials so that that way we can exceed this guy swap it over to our opponent's field with geonator transverser and just lock them out of playing the game because well they just got a lot to deal with and we have a lot of follow-up in most cases and really the biggest way that we're getting monsters onto our opponent's field is going to be through our scrap golem because you can special summon scrap monsters to either player's field so you're using his effect one or two times to summon to your own field and then using it the last time to summon to your opponent's field for a geonator transverser play with this guy um but like i said if you can't make it to that then you just set up a bunch of powerful synchros and you make your board hard to deal with so uh that's always fun now last up here real quick for the side deck this one shouldn't take too long this is kind of uh mostly pretty self-explanatory of course since we're playing makanko we have to play the kaijus if we know that we're going second we're signing these bad boys in 100 of the time we got three jizakiru two dogaran i know it's fire format i know a lot of decks would love to have the dogaran which is why we're gonna try to put it on our field uh with 
Three copies of Interrupted Kaiju Slumber to pair with these guys. We'll give our opponent the higher attack point monster so that we can attack into it with our Makongos, deal them a bunch of damage. Uh, or it doesn't even matter because we just end up popping the Kaiju and they're out the monster anyways. But as long as we give them the light one, it's usually a lot less punishing. Or if we come against non-fire decks, we can give them the Dogoran and it doesn't really matter. There's even sometimes if you're going first games two or three, you can still side these in. Uh, because if your opponent's on a lot of hand traps, this is a way to be able to kind of play through those early on if your opponent like hand traps your normal summon like a scrap raptor or something you can destroy with the intercept it interrupted kaiju slumber give them a monster give yourself a monster and have potential to still keep playing um and then you don't even have to worry about using the scrap golem to get a monster on their field because uh, interrupted kaiju slumber has done it for you and then on a subsequent turn you can search for another kaiju if you absolutely need it we're also playing one double-edged sword once again for if we know that we're going second we can put this in to be able to get an extra equip spell set up in our grip that will just allow us to one or two shot our opponent a lot easier with Makonkos. Uh, so just good to have. Next up here, I got one copy of Psychic Tracker, double copies of Psychic Wielder. I only had one copy of Tracker, otherwise I might have put more in here, but these are just extra level three extenders that are really easy to get onto the board to help us set up our plays a lot more. Once again, if we're going first and we need to play through some more hand traps, these are just good options to be able to slot in to give us more ability to play through stuff. Uh, and then lastly here for if we're going first, just because I had the extra slots and I figured it doesn't hurt to have a little extra protection, we're playing three copies of Solemn Judgment so we can uh, deal with those board breakers. I mean, like I said, there's not really much to it. I tried to build the deck without hand traps and I think so far it's been pretty successful, but otherwise that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning into today's video. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down below and comment your thoughts on this deck down below as well. I'm very curious to hear what you guys think. Until the next video, lads, thank you so much again for joining in and we'll catch you all next time. As always, good fun. Have luck.